In the ever-evolving world of mobile gaming, collectible card mechanics have become an increasingly popular meta-gameplay feature, captivating players and offering a unique sense of progression. But how do you harness this trend and create a dynamic gameplay system that not only engages, but also retains players? Welcome to Reconstructing Fun, where we deep dive into meta-gameplay features and how you can implement them using Heroic's powerful suite of game tech. From the massive success of games like Clash Royale, it's evident that players crave a sense of achievement and progression from today's games. But building such systems from scratch can be daunting and time-consuming. Enter Nakama and Hero, our cutting-edge tools designed to supercharge your game's development. With Nakama's open-source game backend and Hero's powerful game development kit, you're equipped to craft feature-rich social and meta gameplay experiences like never before. Today, we'll embark on a journey from back-end server intricacies to the client-side magic in Unity. We'll explore how to seamlessly integrate collectible card mechanics, ensuring your players remain hooked game after game. Whether it's defining card rarities, managing in-game economies, or implementing upgrade systems, we've got you covered. By the end of this, you'll be equipped to create a gameplay experience that's not just fun, but also deeply engaging. With that said, let's dive right in and get started. So we'll start by taking a look at the backend server code. Here we define some error messages that are used throughout the code base. And here we have our init module function. If you're familiar with Nakama, then this is the same code that you would write to instantiate your module within Nakama itself. We grab some environment variables, and then we grab a hero license key from the environment variables as well. We define our path to the hero binary, and then we initialize the hero system. Here you can see we're initializing hero with the base system, achievements, economy, energy, and inventory. I'll go into the definitions for these in a little while. You can then see that we're creating this card definitions object here, and we've got this function, new collectible card definition. We'll jump into that in a second, but you can also see that we register two RPCs. We've registered an inventory list cards RPC, and we've registered an inventory card upgrade RPC. The first will be used for the client to grab a list of their current collectible cards, and the second will be used once the player has collected enough cards to be able to upgrade a single unit. Let's dive in to our definition files. First of all, let's have a look at the inventory definition. You can see here that we define a number of items within our hero inventory system. These are all cards. As you can see, we've defined the category to be cards. They have a name, which is just the name of the card itself. They belong to several sets. In this case, we have a cards collection and a cards common collection. We define the maximum count that the user can have, whether or not these are stackable, they're not consumable, so they don't have any consume reward, but they also have a string property, which is the rarity of the card. Now you can see if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we have some different rarities here. So we have this rare card, and we also have some epic cards, and we also have some legendary cards here. Next, what I want to do is dive into the economy definition file. And you can see here that we're initializing our user with a number of currencies. So they get some coins to start with, and they also get some gems. As well as this, they start the game with a number of items. Now here I've just given the player a number of every single type of card within the game, and this is going to allow me to demonstrate the upgrade facility. Now I'd like to come to the collectiblecards.go file. This is a custom file that I've written that uses the underlying systems within Hero to generate a collectible card system for our game. You can see here that we define some structs, the first one is the collectible cards definition, and this contains all of the information that we need to be able to generate the stats and the upgrade costs for our collectible cards within the game. The stats ladder property is a map that defines what stats a card should have based on its rarity and its rank. The card cost ladder defines how much it should cost to upgrade an individual card based on its rarity and its current rank as well. You can see then that we define the rarity stat struct, and this just contains whatever stats we want to place on our card. In this instance, we have points and probability, which map to gameplay elements within collectible card games such as Clash Royale. And then we define our card cost struct. Now this is how many cards is it going to cost the player to upgrade this specific card, and how many coins is it going to cost them as well. Next, we have a function called new collectible card definition. Now, this is the function that you saw being called in the main.go file. And what this does is it reads a JSON configuration file, and then it unmarshals that into our collectible card definition struct. Now, if we quickly dive over to the JSON file here, you can see that we have the rarity stats ladder. And then for every rarity of card, 
We're defining based on the rank, how many points and what the probability is. So that's our stats for this particular card. And we have this for every rarity. So we have for rare, for epic and for legendary. Then we also have our card cost ladder. And again, this is keyed by the rarity of the card. So we have common here. And for example, here, a rank one common card would cost one card to upgrade and zero coins. A rank two would cost two and 50 coins and so on. And again, we have this for every rarity of card. The next thing we have here are two structs, which we use to define the RPC payloads that we expect to receive from the player, as well as the RPC payload that we send back to the player whenever they call any of the RPCs for this collectible card system. The first here is the card level up request. This simply takes an item ID, which correlates to the item ID in our inventory system, for example, card underscore Nox here. And this is used in the upgrade RPC to determine whether or not the player is eligible to upgrade that card. For the inventory list cards, we return a map of all of those card stats that we saw in the definition file, as well as the costs, and all of the cards and their metadata for the player. Inside our inventory list cards RPC function here, this is where we're gonna grab all of the cards for the player. You can see that we're using the inventory system, we're listing all inventory items, and we're defining the cards category. So we're only receiving cards from the inventory system. What we do then is we loop through all of these cards, we grab all of their properties, and then we'll consult the rarity card cost ladder based on the card's rarity, this allows us to dynamically generate at runtime the card's level as well as what statistics it has based on how many cards have been spent on this particular card. This is great because it means we can change our rarity cost ladder using something such as Satori for live ops, which means we can affect the leveling curve without having to recompile and redeploy our game. The next thing we do is we figure out how much the card is going to cost to upgrade based on what the next level is. And we'll pass this back to the client using the card's numeric properties metadata. Finally, we'll return all of this information back to the client as a JSON response. For the card upgrade RPC, we'll grab the request from the player. This includes the item ID that they'd like to upgrade. We'll again grab the player's inventory, just specifying that we want cards only. And then we'll loop through all of the inventory. We'll dynamically calculate the stats for each card again, like we did with the list function. And then once we find the item that the player would like to upgrade, We'll do some calculations here to work out whether or not the player is currently eligible to upgrade the card based on how many coins they have and how many cards they currently own in the inventory system. If the player has enough coins and enough cards to upgrade, then we'll consume the items as needed and we'll also deduct from their wallet how many coins it's gonna to cost to upgrade. Finally, we'll update the metadata properties for this particular card and then we'll recalculate all of the stats for this specific card instance. Then, just as we did for the inventory list RPC, for each card we'll work out what the next upgrade cost would be, and then we'll pass all of this information back to the client as a JSON response again. Now let's see how this all looks from the client side in Unity. You can see here that we have our game interface, and if I open up the code for this, you can see that the first thing we do is we bootstrap our hero game with this collectible card game coordinator. You can find all of the information about how the coordinator works in our documentation, but a quick rundown is that we create a list of systems which allows us to have deterministic startup within our game by initializing all of the systems within Hero in a specific order. In this case, we're initializing the inventory system, the economy system, and our custom collectible card system. Let's go into the collectible card system itself. Coming up to the top of this file, you can see that we have a bunch of public dictionaries which list our card costs, the stats, and which cards the player owns. We then have some functions for initializing this system, and then we have two available functions, one for getting the player's current cards, and one for upgrading a single card instance. The getCards function simply calls the RPC on Nakma with the inventory list cards ID. It then grabs the payload and converts this into a card list object, which contains the card costs, the stats, and the cards. It then notifies any observers of this system so that we can do things such as update the user interface. The upgrade cards async function does a similar thing where we pass a payload to an RPC, the inventory card upgrade RPC. Then we grab the card list back from the response. And again, we update our cached values and notify any observers of the changes. We also have a card manager class. Now this card manager is responsible for coordinating all of the calls to our various hero systems. You can see inside our init async function here, 
we create two system observers, one for our economy system and one for our collectible card system. Then we call the getCardsAsync function on our collectible card system. These system observers allow us to tie UI changes or any other changes that we need to specific events happening within the individual systems. So for example, in our on economy system change function here, we simply grab the latest value of the coins for the player and we update a UI label for that. In our on collectible card system here, we clear the grid of cards, we sort the new cards from the system, we hide the loading spinner, and then we update the UI for our card grid. Then down here, whenever a card is clicked, we call the upgrade card async function on our collectible card system, and then we refresh the economy system. So you can see here that all of our cards have loaded. We have all of the information about what rank the card is, what the upgrade cost is in terms of cards, and in terms of coins, and we have things such as rarity displayed as different colored card backs. You can see that if we click on a card that is eligible for an upgrade identified by this symbol up here, that the card will update. We're now rank three, and you can see the card counts changing here as we go. Once we're no longer able to upgrade this card, the upgrade symbol will disappear, and we can no longer do anything with this card. The thing to bear in mind here is that we didn't have to write any specific logic to update this user interface. We simply observed the changes to the system itself and all of the interface automatically updated. Our Hero Game Development Kit makes implementing complex meta gameplay systems such as the collectible card system you've seen here extremely quick and easy. With our configuration driven and composable meta systems such as inventory, economy, energies, progression and more, we empower developers to add engaging gameplay features at breakneck speed, cutting development times by as much as 12 months. If you'd like to learn more about how Hero can help power your next game, head on over to heroiclabs.com hero, where you'll find all the information you need to get started. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our community forums at forum.heroiclabs.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.